Okay, good morning and good afternoon. So it's already the time to start our module today. So today we have three speakers from different venture capitals. They will share their views on the industry and their investment experience in the area of NFT and metaverse. So firstly, I would like to invite Mr. Allen. He is the co-founder of Yuan Yuzhou Ventures. His topic is how to capture value in the Web3 metaverse. So let's welcome. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, very glad to come to um, here Global Metaverse Bootcamp. And uh, I'm Alan from Yuan Yuzhou Ventures. Uh, first of all, uh, please allow me to make a brief introduction of Yuan Yuzhou Ventures. Um, we are focused on metaverse in investment, uh, and uh, uh, our founder uh, Tao Rongqi, uh, he uh, uh, he was in charge of Neo's ICO in uh, two thousand sixteen. Uh, after that, he also was co-founder of uh, NGC, and uh, in two thousand nineteen. Uh, he established uh, Xorder, an organization that focused on uh, complex uh, system and and the DAO and uh, um, crypto research and uh, games uh, census, yeah, and uh, uh, token economy, <coughs> and uh, he have over thirteen years of gaming experience since uh, his childhood. So we have a, a basic science of uh, metaverse. Uh, in early this year, when we saw the NFT was on fire, uh, following our uh, perspective on NFT as a value carrier of uh, metaverse in the future, we knew the metaverse will arrive very soon. Uh, so uh, we found uh, Yuan Yuzhou Ventures, and uh, Yuan Yuzhou Yuan Yuzhou is a metaverse in China. So. Um, so, uh, we, we, we focus on a uh, metaverse investment and we believe, um, uh, we believe in, in, in metaverse, we need a web three based metaverse. Uh, we believe composability, uh, investment, and we believe, uh, we should, uh, we should, uh, uh, empower our portfolio after we invest them. So, uh, we have a deep, uh, uh Besides, we have a uh, deep par partner with White Metrics and uh, Musk. And White Metrics uh, also is the host of this uh, gl global uh, metaverse bootcamp. And uh, it, it's, it's the biggest China ID platform in China. And Musk, um, it's a very famous Web3 com very sweet program. Um, a boss of both of them with a, a huge developer uh, eco ecology and uh, we also maintain good network relationship um, with some top uh, exchanges and uh, uh, other program uh, excellent program in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the industry. Okay, uh, let's start uh, today's uh, topic how to how to capture value under the uh, Web3 based metaverse. To explore this issue, let's first share our core concepts of metaverse based on Web3. Uh, what's the Web3 based metaverse and uh, what is the difference between, uh, uh, between uh, Web2 and Web3 based metaverse? Um, first, let's, uh, let's brief, briefly review the de development of the uh, of the internet, which is roughly uh, divided into three areas: uh, Web One, Web Two, and Web Three. Um, in the Web One, which started in the nineteen nineties, uh, was about information. Uh, the World Wide Web reduced uh, transaction costs and uh, made information searchable and trans tra uh, transferable. Uh, Google was uh, definitely the winner of this first era of the internet. Uh, Web2 <coughs> Web brought social and uh, commerce platforms. Um, producers and uh, consumers of information, goods, and the servers 
a service uh, were brought together, a P2P value exchanges were born. Well, web one were was primarily one way. Maybe, uh, for example, um, reading Google search results, you can only uh, reading read Google search results, but you can um, you you can change it. Uh, web two was more uh, bi-directional. Um, for example, on on Uber, you can be a driver or a rider. Uh, on Instagram, you can post content and uh, consume content too. Uh, Facebook is a dominate company born in the Web two. Well, <coughs> Web two created uh, enormous value. Value always passed through a middleman, uh, centralized plat platforms like. Uh, Facebook, Uber, Twitter, YouTube, control the data and make the rules. Web3 is about ownership. It's about the direct uh, connect between uh, creators and uh, consumers and uh, the gatekeepers. Yeah, um, blockchain is the, is the innovation that makes uh, Web3 possible through trust, trustless, uh, sec secure value transfers, Web3 will remove the brokers and uh, intermediaries who have uh, traditional traditional normalized value. In the Web3, user will uh, become the real creators and uh, builders on the on the internet, and the data information and the data assets created by uh, users will belong to themselves finally. In other words, as the design and the vision of the next generation in internet. Web3 will be more, a more open, fair, and a secure network. And its network form is not a simple upgrade of the uh, current Web2. And the core problem it, it has to uh, solve is mainly the distribution of platform benefits. Uh, and the Web3 will be more user centric and uh, and uh, so digital uh, digital identity, uh, and we finally will have a uh, decentralized decentralized digital identity, and uh, promising production data validation and de de decentralization are all key to its uh, development. Mm. At this point. Um, the pass through economic uh, tokenomic system allow users to directly uh, participate, participate in the uh, development and the decision making of the platform. A user will not only be users of the platform, uh, repeat, repeating the value generated while freely creating content, but they will also have a right in community, community governments and the product development and uh, co collective uh, demands of users will become an important basis. In other words, we will create more and more valuable UGC content than ever in metaverse in the future. And um, um, Web2 allow us create value via UGC community very convenient than ever. Um, and uh, in the future, in the future, we will create more and more um, creative value uh, from UGC community too in the uh, Web3 era. So, but uh, we don't want its value captured still by uh, centralized platform like Facebook, Google. So we need a Web3 based metaverse to protect us. Okay. Um, after answer the question that uh, why we need a Web three based metaverse, uh, and the second stage is to uh, to tell uh, to tell about uh, how we see this stage of the Web three based metaverse and uh, what's what 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 what's the uh, process of that. Uh, we we likely uh, we like to think. The Web three based metaverse, um, as the new world in the uh, American history, or the Wild West in the his American history uh, history too, 
or rather, um, metaverse is just like a public chain with picture or video. Imagination that imagine that um, how you uh, American went from discovering the new world step by step to the present, and uh, how the Wild West was pioneered, pioneered, or how the public chain went from a simple uh, concept of a smart con a smart contract to now being ready for 100 million users. Yeah, just like um, blockchain, uh, we uh, the process will be separated from two parts. Um, the one is uh, the one is new world part. Uh, to end, the core things of the new world is to uh, do the MVP to the one, one more and more MVP and again consensus consensus and build the new standard. It's about zero to one, and the second one, second part, is flywheel FX. Um, the aim of it is to is it's it's about a scan up. It's about one to one hundred. Yeah, just like, um, this picture. Um, yeah, the Web three based metaverse is is in the process of this positive feedback circle. Um, we believe that the metaverse based on Web3 is a large social experiment, just as when we described innovations such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, DeFi, we are in a large social uh, experiment in which we filled out patterns how to work together in the metaverse, how to build a DAO, how to investment, how to uh, incentive users uh, by the way of uh, social Darwin, <coughs> because the world is changing so fast that we simply can tell what will happen in the next few years. And if that this is, if that's the case, why would we think the product-based metaverse will arrive in, on schedule? Yeah, just like um, in early this year, a lot of, a lot of people <coughs> said metaverse won't come too soon or. Um, at least uh, they, uh, we were uh, we, we should need we, we should await the um, metro device the metro uh, technology like oculus or like AR VR technology um, and uh, we should uh, wait uh, like a Facebook company or Tencent they build a metro metaverse just like uh, Oasis in the in the film in the Ready Play One film. And then we can uh, experience the the whole uh, the whole metaverse, uh, just like the film shows us. But let let let's think about it. Uh, we are in the Web three based metaverse, and uh, really we 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 really is that the works. In uh, Web two based metaverse will, will will work. I don't. I, I just don't think so because um, there is so much uh, proof that the things was not uh, looks like or the things were was not was not uh, go as we expected. Just for example, <laughs> um, in traditional opinion. Uh, if we want to step in uh, metaverse, we should have an avatar, and uh, we can make our own avatar by some tools. But actually, the, the in, in real, in, but in real life, uh, we have uh, but in the fact of the uh, real crypto 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 world, uh, we. We we don't just we just don't uh pitch our uh, pitch face by ourselves. We just accept a monkey, a punk, for our avatar. Yeah, it's um. It's can't imagine before until the the fact come to life. Yeah, and uh, another another example is that because because of the uh, popular popularity of PFP market. There is something like, uh, the rarity tool, and uh, they they will classify, 
uh, they will classify this uh, JPG as high, uh, middle, low level, and uh, people will simply accept th th this uh, this uh, standard. It's, it's it's just like ridiculous, but the thing is is that, and um, uh, we we always think think it's ridiculous that in visual 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 world we still should pay we, we still should pay a lot of money to buy land because in real life we we, we can afford some a uh, uh, a house or we can afford a a a platform a, a plant. But uh, we think in in virtual virtual world, uh, we we should get some a house. We should get a very big land for free. But actually, in real situation, the real situation in crypto world is that we still need to pay a lot of money, uh, even more than real life, uh, to to buy a house or buy a land in, um, crypto voxel in sandbox or in uh, decentralized. So, uh. The real life, the real life is very have a large gap with what we s imagination. So, uh, MVP is very important, uh, to to prove, uh, to tell us, uh, how we should live in the future with this uh, with with, uh, with with Web three, and uh, after that. And after that, um, this case, this case is about uh, give us the insight that the uh, pra practice of metaverse exploration, even so, the final results may be able to be foresight. Uh, the actual uh, process is so random that it cannot be planned, and can only be um, improv improvised. It is a very complex system. Only we can do is try our best to involve in and uh, experience. The, the Web3 based uh, metaverse, which is a permissionist and uh, um, grows widely, is to uh, create such an MAP environment. Uh, when a certain model is proven to work, more traditional users will be brought in, in, into, the, into the field. Yeah, <coughs> and the new mass users will put forward a new demand, and then the new demands will involve a model or project to work through a social Darwin, just like yeah, GameFi and uh, X Affinity. The play to earn proven to work, and <coughs> and YGG bring a lot of Philippines to the crypto world, and uh, we see. <coughs> we will produce more and more play play to earn play to earn crypto uh, no, crypto program and bring more and more people all over the world to the crypto world. Then we want to build we want to create or we want to produce more fun uh, fun uh, more fun game and more uh more more more, more good more better thing uh, better things to uh, to produ produce value to them to these users and so on. After we run through the organization and the incentive firms of people in the metaverse, we will gradually bring out the mental product and the technology advantages of traditional Web2, such as <coughs> we will bring AR, VR hardware and 5G technology, and we will bring a traditional brands like Adidas and like Coca-Cola uh, to 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 crypto world and uh, we will bring a traditional enterprises and to build a better metaverse in the end and finally let hundreds of millions of users um, enter the metaverse with real economic and social activities and social network so just like this circle and we also we need an infra in in infrastructure to follow the mass, uh, the larger, larger, uh, hundred uh, billions of users, they can uh, move the, this, this, their activity on chain. Just like um, we, we, we need a, we need a um, high, high scale, scalable uh, public chain. We need uh, there are two solution. We need OP, OP roll up. We need the ZK to prove our privacy. 
and so on. So we are at this uh, positive circle and uh, we won't stop it. We can't stop it. So uh, we will the, also we think the Web3 based metaverse will come very, very soon, sooner than uh, we imagine. Ima so um, let's to the next part how to capture value in this in, in this phase yeah, we like to uh, we like to call the current phase of great age of uh, navigation how do we capture a uh, value in this phase or in this stage we think um, this this people who are willing to be a, a pirate love to adventure accept Charles who can uh, easily gain consensus, uh, they can capture the, uh, the most value in this stage. According to, yeah, according to our understanding of the current metaverse stage, there are still two parts to see how to capture value. The first one is new world part. Yeah, like I say, about um, the end or the core, it's about uh, again, uh, consensus. It's about one, uh, zero to one. The core point is how to establish market from uh, zero to one, or how to find this zero to one market and gain consensus and define define this market and makes be a and, and maybe this pro uh, this team should be the rules rules maker. Yeah, they need to keep uh, innovation. They need to find, they, they, they need to uh, stay uh, sensitive so they can find and design niche market at the very first early stage. Yeah, they should uh, good at story, say story, and become uh, rule makers. And they should be uh, crypto native and good at uh, run community. Uh, for example, <laughs> For example, uh, BAYC. Yeah, BAYC. Um, he uh, born in May this year, and uh, the, uh, the 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 and uh, sees the avatar niche network uh, market. Yeah, before that, we just have a uh, punk, but uh, BAYC is the f the second avatar program, and uh, it's it's crypt native. Crypto native and uh, their community is very, uh, very good and uh, and they 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 tell the community a good story of NFT will bring avatar to metaverse, so they qu quickly they 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 gain the consensus and uh, brought itself from. Uh, follow uh, from follow price from zero zero eight to one point five ether, uh, and the completely complete the transformation from zero to one. Yeah, um, this example show us that uh, BAYC or these monkeys is a few new IP. It's crypto native IP. And uh, after this operation, that uh, he quickly become uh, the total size is over uh, 20,000 20, ether. Yeah, it's about maybe uh, uh, over uh, one, one, uh, uh, yeah, 1,000. One uh, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, it's about. Okay. Okay, it's about over. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a very a huge valuation of this program. Just uh, about uh, just uh, just the past uh, several several months. Yeah, so it's totally a zero to one market of IP, and uh, we can see the, the second part. It's a flywheel FX part. Um, it's about scaled up. It's about one to one hundred. Um, team should deliver their product. 
um, and uh, combined with traditional cap capital and uh, traditional resource, uh, they should help themselves so that they could cooperate everyone, every uh, project in this industry. Um, they should uh, full use of capability. They should uh, globalization. They should uh, leverage the network fact. Yeah, still the BAYC example. After they built, uh, they, they, they finished the zero to one part. Um, they was seen, they were seen by, the, by some capital and uh, they combined with some uh, traditional resources. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Crestis uh, uh, action them, and uh, they they uh, recently they co branding co branding with Adidas, and they became they became the hub uh, that every avatar program or every PFP program or every metaverse program they want to cooperate with uh, BAYC so they can quickly uh, they can quickly gain thousands of users. And uh, after after this operation, the fo the flow price has very quickly gone up above fifty ether now. So this very this 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 new brand this uh, very new crypto uh, crypto native brand uh, from zero zero eight to fifteen ether just pass. Uh, Maybe half of uh, half of a year. Yeah, it's 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 so quick. It's so quick. So, uh, we can see uh only less than one year. BAYC has become the world class fashion brand. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. So it's it's tell us, uh, how powerful or how amazing that if we of our team they find a a, a niche market that can bring zero to one, then they have ability to bring the program to one to 100%, 100. And uh, yeah, they were again very, uh, very much, and uh, they were very successful. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was sure the other two uh, example to tell further. Um, another example is uh, Rarity 2. Relying on the heart of the PFP market, Rarity made a simple uh, model based on metadata. <coughs> and uh, it will tell you what's the score of your Arata, uh, whether it is really reasonable or not. Yeah, because everyone wants to know uh, whether his Arata uh, worthy or not worthy. So Rarity ready to quickly gain the consensus and gain the pricing rights and everyone would price the avatar according to it and the rarity to turning it to into a standard and become a common service that all avatar programs or all pfp projects would ac access and uh, he 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 uh rarity to where 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 uh, the, the, this program, this program should pay uh, one ether for each program that to to rarity two. So you see, it's the another example that rarity two find uh, another zero to one market of PFP market uh, established. Although it can hardly become uh, one to one hundred uh, things. But it still can uh, have uh, it. It still can gain a lot of a profit. It's the charming of uh, Web three based metaverse. And uh, finally, uh, the example in metaverse uh, in Open C, <coughs> relying on uh, Open C build the uh, standard of meta uh, metadata, and the uh, relying on the bull market of PFP market. Uh, OpenSea has become a uh, over one uh, ten billion dollar com valuation company. So um, 
my point, after all, my point in brief, is that、uh, we are in a very new world, and、uh, we are at a very early stage. So we need to keep the our our、uh, so the team.、Uh, we want the teams. They keep innovation and find、uh, one zero to one market, another one zero to market, and so he will be he will be uh successful, uh very quickly and、uh, some some kind of easy. And、uh, after. Uh, after this,、uh, after our yeah, the, the final of our、uh, part, the final、uh, the final part is to show that how we help our portfolio. Yeah,、uh, we can pr provide this、uh, service to our portfolio, like education of crypto, uh, brainstorm, uh, business model design, uh, tokenomic de uh, design. And、uh, matching resources like te、uh, technology, marketing, business,、uh, investment, uh, institu institution. Yeah, for example, <laughs> when we were first founded,、uh, NFT was、uh, still hype in the artwork field, but we thought that artwork market won't be that big in the future. Although hot at that time, NFT means much more. At that time, we thought that we thought if the metaverse would would come soon, that we need definitely need to create buildings in this virtual land, like sandbox, like crypto voxel, like decentralized, and there will be various social activities in these things and buildings. This is a whole new one to zero market, and compared to uh play to earn, <coughs> uh we. Would like more than uh, would 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 we rather like we rather would like a creative one, uh, we think the creative one is more reasonable that every a、uh, meta 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 metaverse every metaverse needs UGC community, and so we hope to discover discover the、uh, excellent creator community as early as possible, so we found, uh, um, uh, Cow's Walk, um. It's the largest Minecraft building or architect、uh, guild in China, and their video and their、uh, art artwork has over eight million plays on Bilibili. Bilibili is、uh, is just like YouTube in in China. At that time, they didn't understand NFT and crypto. So, uh, but uh, so yeah, yeah, we we. Although they they didn't understand NFT and crypto, but we think、uh, they are good and、uh, they are the、uh, largest MC、uh, Minecraft building、uh, architect、uh, guild in China and uh, uh, they have a mutual education、um, system to edu educate uh to educate uh uh arch architect very younger and.、Uh, They have almost one over one thousand architect people, and community. So we think it's it's good. It's good. So we invest in them and educated them that what NFT is, uh, what we understand metaverse will be, and、uh, eliminated the bad impression of crypto. Yeah, we know. Uh, China almost banned the whole industry, and bought sandbox land for them. To build, so that they can enter the crypto world faster and smooth. At the same time, we will keep them updated with the、uh, um, latest mar market trends and、uh, some new, very new program. <coughs> and then, we 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 after and then after the Beepo painting was auctioned for a、uh, six or for over. Uh, sixteen nine million dollars. They finally <coughs> think we are right, and then we started to prepare the first Chinese avatar program. Um, discussing we discuss、uh, we discuss the technology development and operation things together, and、uh, 
we brainstorm, we introduce them white metrics for technology and uh, introduce them crypto C for marketing. And finally, they sold out all avatar and earned about uh, 400 ether. Uh, current value is about $1.6 million. And uh, at the highest point, the flow price up to uh, 0, 4, 0 0.4 ether. And uh, after that, we we still involved in business model design and uh, economic model design. And uh, we tell them that you should tell a very good story about um, architect uh, good and a, a creator a creator good to the metaverse. And uh, we built uh, we we finished BP together, and we introduced them a lot of. Uh, investment institution and uh, after that uh, recently it's almost closing the uh, this uh, this round of rising so um, we we uh, our yeah as the beginning like a uh, uh, like the slogan of us in many of us we build uh, we always think uh, we should build it together in web3 based metaverse and uh, we really want to help this a very promising program. Um, so if um, any pro any team uh, in this global uh, metaverse boot, boot uh, in this global <laughs> metaverse bootcamp, um, if you want to uh, raise money or you think you are ex excellent or you want to do some special, yeah, please find uh, please touch us. And uh, we we want to we 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 are very want to uh, cooperate with you, you with you, and uh, expect the further uh, cooperation. Yeah, finally, I wish you all the best in finding your own place in the metaverse. Yeah, thanks. Crypto Ventures is actually a capital that focuses on funding great projects on NFT and. Metaverse. They have traditional Chinese art collections go into NFT area. So next, we will have uh, our second speaker, Miss Xiao from Hashkey Capital, which is a very famous capital in crypto area as well. She is the chief investment officer. She will be talking about some investment experiences on the NFTs and metaverse. So let's welcome. Well, hello everyone. Um, this is Xiao. I'm the investment director of uh, Hashkey Capital. Well, um, firstly, uh, here's some uh, basic uh, basic intro about Hashkey Capital. Uh, so we're a Hong Kong-based uh, blockchain VC and. Um, uh, have been uh, investing in blockchain gaming and uh, metaverse sector for a pretty long time. Uh, our portfolios include uh, some infrastructures such as uh, Mix Marvel and Ranger Protocol, uh, some NFT technology providers such as uh, Genies and uh, Anima, uh, also some uh, gaming studios like uh, Animal Cup Brand and uh, Concept Art House. Uh, as well as uh, some games like uh, Aurori, Cedar's Heroes, uh, Era 7, and um, I uh, Iron Cell. So today I would like to uh, talk about how to make a good uh, game file project. Uh, well, the first section is about um, how to build a sustainable token system. Uh, well, here, here are uh, two formulas. Uh, they can actually apply to all kinds of assets, uh, both token and uh, gaming assets. The first one is a uh, common sense. Um, token supply should be uh, balanced with uh, token demands, which means uh, at an uh, equilibrium point, um, the uh, asset generating should be uh, as fast as uh, asset consumption. The second one says uh, the uh, utility of token should be uh, balanced between spending and holding. Well, it's very hard to uh, control the selling pressure if a token can only be uh, used as 
payment to, uh, payment tool. So you need to create a lot of use cases for the token to uh, make it worth holding. Uh, you can think about Ethereum. Uh, why people are willing to hold Ethereum? Because um, uh, well, it uh, it can be accepted everywhere. Almost, uh, there are like hundreds of protocols on uh, Ethereum requiring users to consume gas fee. Uh, well, but um, what if the token can only be spent in one project? Uh, people may not tend to hold it. So. Normally, a sustainable token will uh, also have a uh, utility of holding, such as uh, staking or uh, receiving dividends, or uh, maybe the privilege to uh, receive asset, uh, uh, asset L drops. Uh, this, this two formula uh, looks very simple, but uh, they're actually fundamental things. Uh, we could uh, maybe look into more details in later pages. Uh, firstly, we uh, we can look at the uh, balance of gaming assets, uh, also known as uh, NFT assets. And there are several types of uh, gaming assets. Uh, actually, the type could be also taken as uh, what the assets can be used for. Uh, for players, the NFT should at least be a pass to the game or maybe equip, uh, equipment uh, and resources to make the uh, game more fun. Uh, those two types are fundamental ones. On top of that, uh, NFT could also be attached with um, uh, extra privileges. For example, uh, receiving dividends, but uh, this might be questionable with regulators because uh, it uh, sounds just like uh, securities. Uh, for from the uh, perspective of the game creator, uh, NFTs can also be used as rewards to uh, important players or maybe important behaviors. Uh, in terms of um, how to obtain the uh, gaming assets. Uh, most of the NFT assets are purchased from uh, both primary or secondary markets, or maybe from breeding. Well, it's uh, worth mentioning that um, the, the purchase should be better to use uh, some tokens outside the game, such as uh, Ethereum or Flow token, instead of uh, in-game token, because um, it could uh, bring external capital into the game. Well, um, some uh, rare equipment uh, could also be used as uh, rewards for the uh, time consumed uh, in the game or uh, for the uh, good skills of the players. Well, it's um, just uh, something like a proof of work. So in terms of the uh, asset features, mm, the most important one is that uh, the uh, asset attributes should be public and fair. And uh, only if the players are happy with uh, these attributes uh, will they come and play the game. But the second thing is the, uh, the cost shouldn't be too high. Otherwise, uh, it will uh, just cut the uh, massive players out. And uh, also the third point is that uh, assets should uh, have healthy inflation. Um, there should be uh, there there should be uh, like more assets for new users to play, but uh, if the inflation is too high and uh, drive the asset price down, the existing players may tend to sell the asset and uh, exit the game. Well, the last thing is that um, the assets should be upgradable. Uh, it's common to see in traditional world that uh, players use resources to uh, strengthen the equipment. But uh, in NFT sector, uh, it seems to be harder to do it because um, every time you change the metadata, the, there might uh, be the gas fee issue because um, it, uh, it, well, it may need some uh, infrastructures from uh, as a standard level.
Um, now we, we are not seeing anyone um, has already uh, uh, come up with a very good solution, but we can look forward in the future. Uh, now we can see uh, the balance in the uh, in-game token, because uh, you know, uh, normally uh, each game will have both NFT assets and uh, in-game token, as well as a governance token. So uh, when we talk about the uh, balance of supply and demand, we are actually talking about uh, how to obtain or generate and uh, where to use the token. There are two principles here. And uh, first one is that uh, when token is generated as rewards, uh, it should be given to real game playing beha behaviors. And the second one is that uh, in-game token should be generated from game uh, instead of uh, from uh, something like a token sale. And it should uh, belong to players instead of uh, investors. So uh, in practice, how to generate or obtain in-game token, uh, it could be uh, rewarding the daily tasks, which uh, attracts players to log in every day, because uh, uh, these uh, behaviors are, are actually contributing daily activity of the game. And it, uh, it also could be rewards to uh, big milestones in the gameplay such as um, uh, reaching certain uh, level or spending certain amount of time in the game. Or uh, it could be generated as rewards for gaming skills. Well, just like um, winning prizes. Uh, on the, right, uh, on the uh, right hand is the use cases of uh, in-game token. The first use cases, uh, the use case will be spending. Well, it's just like uh, in traditional games, uh, whatever you purchased in the game, uh, you could use the token. For example, uh, use the token as a breeding fee or maybe use the token to purchase in-game items or uh, spend the token to, uh, to, to, uh, to upgrade the equipment or maybe uh, to purchase a ticket to arena. And uh, the second, uh, the second uh, uh, use case is holding. Uh, usually it's uh, something like staking. For example, uh, staking to participate in arena or staking to build a team or just pure, uh, pure staking. Uh, and some game uh, will also accept in-game token in some like uh, governance scenario. Uh, like uh, voting for changing some uh, game parameters. Well, um, one more thing is that uh, not all the games need an in-game token. Uh, when a game mechanism is um, uh, complicated and um, the in-game economy is uh, easy to be influenced by external market, uh, it's worth an independent in-game token. But if the game logic is uh, easy and straightforward, uh, you can also use some mainstream token instead. For example, uh, we know that uh, in the Z Run game, uh, now they use uh, WETH as uh, in game currency because uh, the game is just relevant, uh, easy, and uh, straightforward. Uh, well, the second part is about how to uh, make the game attractive and uh, playable. Well, we can see that uh, today, most of the blockchain games have a play to earn mechanism, but it's very necessary, but um, a game should be uh, playable at first because uh, it's essentially a game. And uh, players should come for playing, not for simply earning. So. Here I came up with uh, several features that I think is, uh, it's uh, important for a good game. Um, the first thing I, I would like to talk about is uh, uh, gaming skill. Well, we can see that um, 
most of the existing blockchain games are mini games. Well, sometimes the uh, players need to do uh, mini less and repeating things to earn money. Most importantly, um, players mainly uh, come for money and uh, well, won't bring much value to the game. We can uh, think about Axie Infinity as an example. Well, now uh, many blockchain game players are make fortune from Axie uh, Infinity. But uh, is it really an uh, interesting game? Maybe, maybe only at the beginning stage. But uh, for me, I started to uh, get bored only after a couple of days because um, it doesn't require much thinking. There are um, only around uh, 130 uh, cars in the game and uh, the cars combination is very limited. So mm, the result of one battle mostly depends on the uh, level of axis. Uh, it's just uh, like simply comparing attributes data of axis. So uh, the, uh, the players can actually anticipate the result as a very uh, beginning of a battle. Well, it's like, um, Whoever has um, higher blood or uh, higher attack or maybe higher level gets win. Um, on the other hand, in the uh, uh, PVE model, uh, in order to win and uh, keep the adventure going, uh, the players need to keep upgrading their access just by repeating the previous uh, checkpoints every day just like here. Uh, so if there's not a good return in this game, I think the players will eventually get tired of it. So on conclusion, my point is a skill-based game uh, will make more sense to real game players. Uh, for example, a card game could uh, have more card combination and uh, have more types of heroes. But uh, of course, it will um, take longer time for game designing and development. However, at the same time, um, it will take longer time for players to get bored. Well, um, uh, on top of uh, this thesis, uh, we made investment in a game called Era 7. Uh, it's a card game uh, with more sophisticated card design and uh, it has as many as uh, 1,000 cards and uh, also a lot of more combination than uh, X Infinity. It targets at uh, real skilled players. The team even came up with a new concept called uh, eSports Fight and uh, Win to Earn. Well, because um, it requires efforts to win and only the winners can get rewards. Well, it's... Um, it sounds similar to traditional esports, right? Because, um, uh, well, in traditional esports sector, um, the professional players spend a lot of efforts in studying the game strategies and uh, spend a lot of time practicing the game. But um, only the top ones can uh, get prize and uh, make a fortune of what they're doing. Well, it's um, actually not very fair for the uh, non-top professionals. So in this case, uh, GameFi is actually a new way for them to, to, um, to make a fortune. And um, they really deserve it because their strategy studying and a high quality playing demonstration could uh, bring great value to the game and um, may encourage uh, new players to join. They call the uh, skill based play to earn as eSport 5. So, well, all in all, um, I think game strategy is uh, well, very important for a real game. Um, the second thing that I would like to talk about is uh, the quality of design. Well, um, in traditional gaming, uh, usually players play for entertaining and uh, their spending in games are completely a consumption behavior uh, instead of um, earning or investing. Um, in some cases, they're just uh, uh, 
even willing to pay for play. But uh, we, uh, we can see that these kind of games are always well made. For example, the uh, art design, the uh, animation, or maybe the whole narrative and uh, background um, are all well made. Sometimes the uh, players would even hanging around without doing anything or doing any tasks. For example, uh, Zelda is mm, such a game. It's made by Nintendo. Um, I know many players just go sighting in the world, including me. For example, just flying here and there or just riding the horses or, uh, well, Basically, you can uh, interact with uh, anything you see in the world. Uh, these are actually nothing to do with the main mission of the game, but uh, players just uh, well uh, just like to spend time in this world. So, um, in blockchain gaming, uh, as uh, VC found, uh, we can see an absolute trend of high quality designing games or so-called triple A games, such as uh, Cedar's Heroes, uh, Star Alice or Illuvian, et cetera. Uh, well, honestly, we are very happy to see that. Uh, normally this kind of games will uh, need a big team, uh, maybe with strong traditional gaming background. So uh, if you want to follow this path, um, at least you need to uh, have a strong team first to just to compete with others. Uh, it also takes long time to develop and uh, apparently you will need a lot of money, but um, not every team has uh, this kind of patience. So. Uh, as investors, we will evaluate their uh, ability as well as willingness to accomplish the product. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, blockchain gaming could bring some different and uh, unique experience as well. For example, um, the narrative or the style of uh, designing could be crypto native. Maybe the uh, game could happen in a crypto world uh, with uh, or decoration, uh, like uh, joint branding with other protocols. Uh, yeah, just, just consider um, crypto users accounts for a big portion of your targets. And uh, it will be fun if they can play in their own story or maybe in a world that uh, familiar with them that uh, will just be, uh, well, somehow in exciting. Or, mm, well, the uh, third feature could be a sophisticated play to earn mechanism. Um, well, uh, it, uh, except for earning tokens, re uh, earning token rewards, um, there could be some more interesting mechanisms in blockchain games. And the most uh, common one would be game theory. Uh, I well, I guess you guys all hear about the uh, the game called Wolf Game. Well, it suddenly became uh, very popular about a month ago. It um, just used uh, used game theory in a lot of places. Uh, well, first of all, there are two. Uh, two opposing roles in this game, which are sheep and a wolf. Uh, they're both uh, NFT assets, or uh, we can call them gaming assets. And uh, they're both revealed uh, from blind boxes. They're uh, like 10% uh, chances to get a wolf and 90% uh, chances to get a sheep. Uh, a sheep is actually a farmer um, in this game. Players can stake a ship and uh, get fixed number of wall token every day, but um, uh, they can only harvest 80% of them because uh, wolves will steal the other 20%. And players can also uh, unstake the ship NFT uh, when they collect a certain number of wall to uh, token. 
but um, there are also a 50% chance to lose all wall token that they have farmed if they just unstake the, uh, the, the sheep NFT. On the other hand, uh, a wolf is uh, more like a predator. Except for stealing 20% uh, of the wall every day, uh, they can also have a 50% chance to steal all of the wall token if a sheep got on stake. Also, uh, if um, an NFT holder decided to breed and get the next generation, uh, wolf can also have 10% chance to take the to, to take the new generation for just for free. All these assets are uh, stole without any cost of wolves. So we would prefer to call them as uh, predators. So uh, you can see there are a lot of things that you need to consider when you make decisions. For example, um, is it better to buy a sheep or buy a wolf? To be a farmer who is able to get fixed return every day or uh, to be a predator who has chance to make profit from other people's labor? Uh, well, for NFT assets holders, uh, well, should they keep farming or keep stealing with uh, existing NFT assets? Or should they, uh, should they, uh, uh, should they breed? Because uh, there are uh, uh, 10% chance to lose the uh, new generation and waste the breeding cost. And the, uh, the breeding cost is the wall token. And if wall token price goes high, the cost won't be cheap. Also for sheep holders, uh, should they get, get, get the uh, guaranteed 80% of wall token every day? Or should they take the 50% uh, risk to unstake sheep and get everything back? So these are actually very uh, interesting questions. And uh, from the perspective of investor, uh, I would say it's a very innovative mechanism. And uh, actually there were a lot of copiers of this game after uh, it got popular. Well, um, I'm not saying that this game would be a long lasting game, but uh, it did bring uh, innovations with game theory. That's, um, well, that's new for players and uh, also uh, bring some experience that we can learn from. Uh, you can also see that uh, sometimes uncertainty is a very attractive mechanism. That's uh, actually easy to understand because uh, crypto players always like uncertainties. You can see how people love blind, bo uh, blind boxes, both in offline world and in crypto world. Also, uh, looking for L jobs is uh, another proof. They're actually betting on the uh, L job amount and token price, which is um, unknown in uh, which is um, also an uh, uncertainty because it's unknown in uh, in advance. However, well, it's um, still a trade off between risk and return. So for game designers, you need to balance those two. It's really just a problem of math because uh, higher risk should be paid off with higher return. Uh, the, the last part is uh, about social effects because, uh, uh, well, from my opinion, a good game should have a good social effects or maybe uh, the game itself is a social, uh, could be a social network. Mm, uh, well, just, well, as, uh, as I just said, well, some, some games can just inspire strong social networks and players can possibly uh, get into relations outside the game. For example, like uh, Pokemon Go, uh, the AR feature of this game just drive people to go out and meet each other in real world. And the networking effect was really shocking. At the, uh, well, I, I'm also a player of this game. And at that time I was in Paris and uh, me and my friend went, uh, just went out on the streets uh, uh, like every day or 
uh, yeah, whenever we are free and just to catch Pokemon we, uh, with uh, acquaintance or maybe just to have battle with strangers. So we always talked uh, about uh, O2O or online to offline in Web2 world. But I think uh, augmented reality could uh, bring metaverse to offline in Web3. And um, it can really build a two-way social network between metaverse and real world. So based on this logic, uh, we just invested in Anima. There are also um, uh, AR NFT uh, well, producers. They are launching a mirror with uh, AR technology. It's a portal from uh, real world to metaverse. And uh, it can be placed at, at um, any location with uh, an AR mobile application and uh, with a camera. Also, the, uh, well, uh, another thing is, um, a game itself can also be a social network, just um, as I said before. For example, um, uh, 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 MMO game, uh, well, is uh, absolutely more social oriented than single player game. So the uh, player uh, can also have group battle through guilds or the players can also uh, create guilds by themselves. Well, uh, so speaking of guilds, uh, I think uh, they're absolutely playing a very key role in blockchain gaming sector. Uh, first of all, they uh, need to build up a community for each game and uh, coach the community members to play all this game. This is uh, their value add for game projects. Well, on the other hand, um, they also need to have a good taste of game and uh, lead the uh, existing community to either earn higher return or play with more interesting game. Most importantly, uh, Guild is very localized. Uh, they know exactly what's the preference of local players and uh, well, what's the user profile like. So sometimes, they, uh, they could also act like an uh, incubator of games and can like give um, very uh, valuable advices to the game, uh, to, to the game team. Okay, so, well, uh, another thing that uh, I, I would like to say is, um, well, uh, it's good to collaborate with guilds at a very early stage of a game, but however, um, in order to keep the uh, decentralization of the game, uh, it makes more sense to collaborate with uh, several guilds at the same time instead of uh, only one, because uh, guilds usually uh, will hold large stake of the gaming assets. You should watch out the um, as a distribution among those users and among guilds. Also, uh, last but not the least, uh, there are some tricks on operations to uh, enhance the social effects as well. Uh, for example, uh, hold some uh, tournaments or maybe involve referral mechanism in user acquisition. Okay. Uh, that will be all of my sharing today. Um, yeah, uh, I would be happy to have further discussion if uh, anyone is interested in uh, Gamify projects or maybe interested in creating your own uh, Gamify projects. Uh, happy to have further discussion uh, later and uh, after this panel. Okay, thank you all. Uh, thanks for the great sharing from Ms. Xiao. I think if, if you are a game file lover, you have been very excited in the past session. Okay, so next we are going to have a speaker from ANT Capital. Her name is Hannah Shen. She will share her perspectives from, from being a venture analyst. So let's see. Hi everyone, and thank you uh, Chain IDE and White Matrix for the invitation. 
My name is Hannah and I am on the investment team of ANT Capital. We are an early to growth stage venture fund for emerging disruptive technologies, particularly in metaverse, web 3.0 applications and disruptive fintech. I'm honored to share a little bit about our fund today, as well as our recent investments and trends we've observed. So ANT Capital is a new global blockchain focused VC fund founded in early 2021 and backed by a world leading fintech giant, among other institutional investors. We've raised $100 million for our first fund and have invested in over 30 different projects in the field of DeFi, GameFi, NFT and Metaverse in the past seven months. What's unique about ANT is our unparalleled industry support from the leading fintech giant Ant Group, who is one of our fund's investors, and the deep blockchain know-how of our team, spanning across Asia, Europe, and North America. And to dive a little bit into details, there are three things I would love to highlight about our fund. First of all, we're able to provide a very professional and bespoke industry insights and extraordinary talent pool for our portfolio companies. So our portfolio projects benefit from our deep understanding of our local market and Ant Group's uh, extensive industry resources in areas such as compliance, go-to-market, uh, etc. And backed by uh, all these uh, very established players in the space, we're able to gather the top tier talents uh, among the industry and offer our portfolios uh, access to an extraordinary talent pool. Uh, as we all know, like finding the right people right now to build a project with you is kind of the number one uh, priority for a lot of uh, founders. So we're able to really help our portfolios uh, build up a, a team and uh, you know find the, the missing jigsaw piece. Uh, to build a, uh, you know, a killer team. And secondly, uh, we're able to offer really rich uh, industry resources uh, in the sense that uh, with our partners, years of experience in blockchain, traditional internet uh, companies, as well as our investor network, uh, we add value to projects through various commercialization opportunities and high quality partnership opportunities. Um, in a way that like really increases the survival rate of our lot of uh, a lot of our portfolio projects. Uh, in particular, uh, we're able to help uh, portfolio companies establish their good market strategies in Asia, uh, as well as in other uh, specific markets. Uh, given our connections with top investment institutions, exchanges, and brokers such as Binance, uh, Huobi, OKEX, um, Bybit, etc as well as uh, blockchain media channels like Chain News, Blockbeats, uh, Bitcoin Magazine, etc. And thirdly, we always, when we make an investment, we keep in mind uh, all, all the different exit options and have really developed a diversified exit option playbook to support our portfolios and facilitate their further growth. So we uh, are able to advise them through channels like IEO, uh, IEX, uh, IEO, or like traditional IPOs, acquisitions, buyouts, and especially uh, with our connection with some of the established um, tech giants, uh, potential acquisitions uh, from, uh, from our uh, investor group. Our credentials also allow us to really invest uh, those new found alongside with some of the top tier investors in the space, uh, such as Andreessen Horowitz, and Mocha Brands, uh, Poly Chain, Paradin, um, Tiger Global, etc. And meanwhile, we formed uh, strategic partnerships with chains like Avalanche, uh, Algorand, uh, Near, and Conflux to better support uh, our nascent projects. In terms of our fund's investment thesis, um, our investment thesis is really formulated by years of industry experience from our partners and the team. Uh, among our three general partners, uh, Jun, um, one of our partners previously led investments at LKEX the Exchange and is a tech vet veteran from the top social and financial products in Asia. And Jasmine, uh, our other partner, uh, was a partner at blockchain fund uh, IOSG Ventures prior to founding uh, ANT Capital and has an extensive network in Europe. Uh, Roger, our third partner, was an early employee at Facebook and Twitter uh, and have a very deep know-how in the social and infrastructure space. Um, prior to ANT, our team has invested in projects like Polkadot, Algorand, 
avalanche, and hence uh, the all these brought in kind of network resources when we built this new found. And uh, based on these experiences uh, that our partners and team have, um, we're able to really formulate our own very unique investment thesis when we're tapping into new use cases and uh, different verticals within the Web3 um, era. And personally, I came from a Web2 media tech, uh, tech startup background uh, after graduating from Harvard and have worked in the social media and metaverse projects space in, in the past. So uh, that's a lot about our fun and what we've done so far, who, uh, who we are uh, as a team. And I would love to also talk a little bit about uh, our most recent investments and some of the, uh, the trends we've observed um, this year and moving to 2022, what we are most looking forward to. So most recently, we've invested in a few very high profile GameFi and NFT projects uh, like, like, you know, uh, everyone's uh, having their eyes on GameFi these days. So, so one of our portfolio projects is called Sin City, uh, whose IGO NFT collection is currently ranking number one on Binance NFT. So Sin City uh, was founded by the ex head of uh, BD at Tron, uh, Roy Liu, among with a, 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 a team with very seasoned uh, game uh, development veterans. And with Nifties, uh, we've recently also invested in this uh, social focused NFT marketplace called Nifties, whose recent launch of the world's first matrix NFT collection in collaboration with Warner Bros um, have completely sold out. We see huge potential in the GameFi and social vice space moving to 2022 and really look forward to projects that can deliver what we think uh, contains entertainment, social, financial and platform values to their communities. And in addition to GameFi and NFTs, we are investors also in a number of infrastructure projects like Staking Rewards and Aurora, uh, with the belief that uh, they are really the foundations of this ever evolving Web3 space uh, and all these new use cases that we've seen uh, in the past year and moving forward. And we're always on the lookout uh, for the next disruptive technology uh, that will push our industry forward and new use cases uh, in the space. So if you're interested in chatting with us, bouncing some ideas, uh, please follow us on Twitter at ANT Capital or go to our website to email us directly. I'm also very happy to connect with all of you on LinkedIn. And just uh, an add on to what I just shared about ANT Capital, uh, one specific example uh, some of you may ask about how we helped our portfolios exactly would be our recent you know, collaboration with uh, Sin City. So Sin City is a mafia based uh, game, a uh, game by project led by, as I mentioned, the ex head of BD at Tron, Roy Liu. So as ANT Capital, we we're able to help three things uh, for Sin City's successful launch uh, on uh, Binance. So first of all, uh, we we're able to help them recruit their team um, so that they've built a very comprehensive and like, well-rounded team with uh, both people with deep industry experience in Web3, in blockchain, as well as a uh, you know, team with a very seasoned game development experience. So that's number one. Number two, uh, we're able to, like by coming in early in the round, also connect them with other potential investors that will create synergies with the project. Um, in the space, as we know, uh, investors are not just providing the capital, but really the resources and the networks that they bring in to portfolios to really help them grow. So we're able to really connect them with other um, suitable investors that we think can add value to the further growth of the project. And thirdly, uh, we're able to advise on uh, which platform they should go for their uh, IDO. Uh, eventually, they were able to, uh, after talking to a few different platforms, uh, able to really uh, decide on moving forward with launching their uh, first uh, NFT collection on Binance. So these are the three things that we were able to help with SinCity. 
Um, and similarly, we were able to also support a lot of our portfolios uh, in these similar regards and also case by case, depending on the project's direction uh, and also really like what the team is looking for. Um, I hope that uh, clarifies some of the questions. I'm also ha happy to connect uh, in private to answer any specific questions you may have about your project, about AMT Capital. Thank you. Well, thanks for Ms. Hannah's uh, presentation today. And if you have great ideas, you can follow their Twitter accounts and DM, me, uh, DM them directly. Okay, I think, I think that's all for today's module. And thanks for your time. Uh, see you. Bye-bye.